Another fantastic programme on a Sunday from BBC Guernsey. Now, it's rare that an action movie gets critical acclaim, but The Raid has wowed the normally snooty movie buffs. It features as part of the Guernsey Film Festival, known as Sonia Shorts, which takes place this September. It sounds like a long way away, September, doesn't it? But it's not. The Raid will be on the big screen here a full two weeks before its DVD release. Here to talk about the film and Sonia Shorts is Winter Tyson. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Lovely to see you again, Winter. Just remind us, what's your involvement with Sonia Shorts? OK, um, I've essentially taken over the organising of what used to be called the Guernsey Lily Short Film Festival. Uh, myself and a colleague called uh, Lisa Godion, who um, is sort of a recent uh, media graduate who's returned to the island, and we're sort of reinventing it as Sonia Shorts. And where does your passion come from for films? Oh gosh, just I I think films the sort of great art form of the 20th century is certainly I think the most democratic art form and I, I you know I I love it. I mean my my dad was a bit of a film uh, nerd and he used when uh, BBC2 used to show all of the Fellinis and Wells films etc cetera, etc cetera. They used to get taped and we used to get plunked in front of them and I think it all comes from there, really. I remember watching quite a few of the old classic black and white movies after Sunday lunch many years ago mm, when I was a girl. Yeah, they leave yeah. a lasting impression on you, They don't certainly they? do. Is it the most impossible question of the morning if I ask you to tell us your favourite film of all time? Oh, it, it is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of um, Orson Welles' movies, Kurosawa's movies. I'm also a big fan of a whole lot of sort of trash as well, like the Brady Bunch movie, terrible, terrible horror and action films, you know, the, the Schwarzenegger uh, and Stallone movies and so on. You could ask me today, I'll give you a different answer tomorrow and the next day, it's, it's, it's impossible. Because I did a piece once on film and catharsism. If people watch a film, if they're going through a certain tragic event in their life or a happy event or if they're a bit depressed, there are certain films that can almost purge you of that feeling. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's sort of, I suppose most recently, I think one of the reasons the, um, uh, said something like the Twilight films have taken off is because if you're a, a sort of a quiet lonely teenager and you see yourself represented on screen um say when you when you look at gay cinema if you see yourself on screen then you get you get a release you get to see that someone else is feeling those feelings someone else has those issues and it's you know if you if you're lonely in your world then you know you've it's someone to share those uh, those emotions and problems with as well a bit of empathy as well as catharsism in a sense oh definitely it? definitely and you know if you go home and you need to unwind after a day at work Brilliant, go home, watch Arnie, um, you know, punch through several walls and so on, or, you know, drag watch out... the end of Pretty Woman. Well, that's it. Drag out Brief Encounter, have a good cry, etc. I et can't cetera. watch that. <laughs> I cannot watch Brief Encounter. I don't just cry. I, wrecking great sobs come out of me with that film. I'm a terrible crier. Are you? Really badly, yeah. Which films yeah. make you cry, then? Oh, practically everything. My wife <laughs> finds it hysterical. Um, we, were watch, we, we were watching Private Ryan last night, uh, Saving Private Ryan, and sort of every sort of other ten minutes I was in tears but I, yeah, I'll, I'll cry at the drop of a hat. I'll oh, that cry, was another one. I was in control after saving, saving Private Run and um, th I mean it, I came out of the cinema, I was dumbstruck, I couldn't speak, I was just sobbing and sobbing and sobbing thinking that those young men had gone through that. Mm. And that's the power of film um, like you say, I mean you get to sort of, with the start of Private Run you get to, you know, feel it feel a part of what very normal, you know, a bunch of um, taxi drivers and plumbers all signed up in the Second World War and went across and went through what could be described as a, a sort of a living hell to, uh, to get us where we are today. And films can do that. You know, they can be a great escape. It can be, a, you know, a good chuckle and such. But they can also show you parts of history. They can show you what your your grandparents might have been through. They can show you what your parents are going through. They can tell you what you're going through. So tell us about Sonia Short since its renaissance, if you like. OK. Um, what we've done is we've... We've rebranded Asania Shorts. What we're trying to do is attract um, sort of more student filmmakers and um, kind of a, a, a more diverse sort of set of films. Asania Shorts, it's about celebrating short cinema. So we define that as films, films that are under 30 minutes long. Um, and uh, we also sort of set our competition at non-commercial films. So films that people have made either as sort of part of the course of study or just for the love of it. I mean, you've got um, groups like Guernsey Filmmakers over here who um, meet regularly.
I think it's a Capel's community centre, and there are a bunch of people who are making films just for the love of making films. They make little documentaries about things like the uh, recent Jubilee celebrations. They have different competitions every month. It's good. It's a good hobby to get involved with, and we we'd quite like to celebrate that. And of course, people from Guernsey are making short films now and entering them into some pretty punchy international film festivals, aren't they? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, we've got. Um, uh, we've got a nice selection of films from sort of uh, local filmmakers uh, have been entered to our festival. People like uh, Mary and Peter Riyad, who used to run the Guernsey Lily, uh, they're regularly entering films all over the world. Um, and then you've got um, sort of youngsters like uh, Josh Fletcher and uh, Jack Delamere, um, who are getting funding from Guernsey Arts Commission, going out and making very accomplished and, uh, to be quite honest, films that make me very jealous of 18-year-olds. Uh, of Have you tried to make films yourself? Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I, I studied uh, film and cinema at university and made some short films. Actually, um, in 2010, last Guernsey Lily, I, I won the award for best sort of local film. So I feel I know, I know what it takes and I, I know the amount of work and energy that goes into um, sort of making a short film, which has made it really hard when we've been to sort of going through our selection process because we, we received over 120 films from, you know, from as far away as sort of Australia and America and so on. We've had to sort of whittle that down to... We've got about 74 films we're going to be showing over the weekend. Tell, it's tell really you, hard. This, this new film, I don't know whether you've read about it, I saw it in the uh, BBC Entertainment um, text section of the telly last night in, in the Locarno Film Festival. There's a new French film that's just swept the boards. Do you know anything about this? No, which one? What's the title? I can't remember the name of it now, but it's done phenomenally well. I mean, and it was shot on a complete and utter budget. I mean, mm. in, in, comparatively, no money was thrown at this film whatsoever. So it just goes to show doesn't it oh yeah definitely i mean and that's one of the other great films about what, watching sort of all of the entrants um myself and my colleague have had i've had to go through it all for the for the festival in october there and um it's just amazing the amount of different stories you see because we don't we don't usually see stories from all over the world in in western cinema uh, we tend to have sort of uh, american or english perspective mm. or western european um, and it's lovely to see stories from all over the world different takes on ideas different uh, ways of thinking about different periods of our history and so on and so forth. Do you think we're very narrow as film watchers? Because you're right, we only watch British... Well, on the whole, and I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not including the, the great film buffs in the island in this, but on the whole we watch British films, we watch American films, we'll probably watch a few French films in our life with subtitles and maybe a Spanish one or two, but very little else. Oh, no, I mean, it's, it's one of those things you... You watch what you know, and you you have we've spoke about shared experience before, and that's that's all a part of it. You watch with the people you identify with. Not not many people would identify with um, sort of the problems facing, say, a, a small African village or so on. So, and you know, we've all done it when we, I think we've sort of said, "Oh, this film's supposed to be critically acclaimed. What's it about? It's about an Afghan family." And you go, "Oh, that sounds really serious." When quite often they're not. Mm -hmm. Quite often they people around the world all laugh and cry. At, roughly the same thing so you just have different ideas about it but i think um generally it used to be the case that uh, television would show films from all over the world but i think over the recent over recent years that's sort of that's condensed slightly and um thing uh, but you know we have the internet so this whole sort of film culture is available to us i used to be involved with um cine guernsey but i'm just too busy with this to have carried that on and they're showing films from all over the world uh, i think then uh, they showed the uh, iranian drama a separation which is a, a beautiful film and i think the, uh, the next film coming up is deep blue sea which is an english film but perhaps a film you might not otherwise sort of pick up in blockbuster is your wife into films as well by default, yeah. But, I, but what I've told her is, it's either this or I, if if my brain didn't have this stuff in, I'd probably like football, and that's much less interesting. So. <laughs> I'm glad she <laughs> said that, not me. <laughs> um, what about the, the crossover now between television and film? I mean, I'm thinking of something, again, locally grown, like This Is Gincy. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's quite a big crossover now, because what you've got is a few years ago, when the um, uh, programme... Well, when uh, sort of the Americans especially started investing in programmes like ER and such, they started attracting actors, directors and writers who would otherwise look down on television. And I think it's quite nice that, you know, years and years ago you had people like Dennis Potter writing for television and television was seen as something quite grand and quite important in people's lives because it's in everyone's living room. But I think that disappeared for a while, but now it's, it's starting to come back. And like I say, we've got sort of local people infiltrating 
different areas of the sort of entertainment industry. I was chatting to a, a friend from school a couple of nights ago, and he um, he shot some scenes for the George Lucas in the George Lucas movie Red Tails, and it's just fascinating to see sort of the, the sort of reach such a small island has at times. Isn't it just? And you think, do, with with the prevalence of movies and, and the... I think the internet's opened it up to a whole new gamut of people who are passionate about films. Does this mean, then, that people are into watching stories so they're, they're perhaps more likely to go to the theatre if they're into film? Yeah, I think so. And certainly things like the National Theatre Live broadcasts are, are sort of bringing theatre to people because it's it, especially for people on own we've got some great local theatre I can I know you know just out in your reception hours looking at all the leaflets for for Gaddox uh, next bits and pieces and then you've got all the other groups doing stuff over here like Guernsey Youth, uh, Youth Theatre and so on um, but I think we've now got a chance to see big sort of productions that would otherwise cost hundreds of pounds mm. just to get off the island and then well, to get up to London. Well, look what put on. I mean, you know, The Sound of Music, they're doing um, Sunset Boulevard mm -hmm. and they've done Evita. I mean, lots of things going on and I must wish Gaddock all broken legs all round mm. for tonight's opening performance of The Memory of Water because they came into the show yesterday, Winter, and they talked us through the, the play and it sounded like a film script. Again, mm, it's yeah, partly why yeah. I mentioned theatre. They reminded me yesterday. It's called The Memory of Water. It's about three sisters and all the ramifications of family and all that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, real, it sounds like one of the old sort of kitchen sink dramas. I don't know whether it, that's a fair description, but wonderfully, wonderfully filmic um, summation that they gave mm. yesterday. And, and there's and a sort of a, a lot of crossover because um, I think Gaddock are doing Rent later in the year, and of course that's that started as a play, but it's now been made into a film, and there's things about film within it and so on and so forth and all this stuff sort of crosses backwards and forwards and it, I think it's fantastic because I, I, li I lived away from the island for a little bit and my wife and I returned last February and since coming back there's so much more stuff going on than when we left five or six years well, ago. I've there's so many it, more groups. Yeah. It's fantastic. Where did you move to? Uh, we lived in Winchester for for about five years or so. What made you make the move? Um, I went to study film, and my wife is a nurse, so she got some uh, some NHS experience whilst we were there. So she looked after you while you were at oh, yeah, college. Yeah. I'm trying to pay it. it kept you in the manner to which you've become accustomed. Well, that's right. I'm trying to pay her back now. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful woman she sounds. What's her name? Katie. Hello, Katie. She sounds like a, a proper hero. Oh, she is. She's. We were about three weeks away from having our first child as well so she's doubly hero at the oh moment. winter congratulations thank you very much yes. well you've got that baby on the way you've also got your other baby the sonia shorts mm -hmm. festival yeah. which is in september tell us all about this and uh, about the raid coming over would you okay well we're screening the raid on the 10th of september up at the performing arts center which again it was lovely to come back to guernsey and find this huge screen on the island all of a sudden uh, the raid it's a a no apologies action movie. It's an Indonesian film directed by a Welshman um, who just randomly met uh, met the star of the uh, who was sort of a um, uh, an ambassador for the uh, martial art. It's called um, Penkat Silat. It's based on, I believe, it's based on uh, Islamic prayer. So it would be be fascinating to see. But it's all about fighting in small spaces. And um, they essentially met. They made a small documentary, and then someone said. This guy looks a bit like Bruce Lee to me. Let's make some films, and they've now they've made the raid, which was it's been an absolute smash hit all, all across England. I mean, it barely got onto any screens, and but it's still got into the top ten, and it's about an hour and forty minutes of proper full-on eighteen-rated action. So Why it's, it's not so one for successful? the children. I think one of the uh, one of the reasons is that um, we're accustomed to watching films that are rated maybe for for a 12 audience, a younger audience like the Bourne films. And it can some because of that rating, they've got to um, edit the films in a certain way, and it can sometimes be hard to follow the action. Um, what's, what's making the raid stand out is that, for the first time in a couple of years, people are able to see action the way someone like Jackie Chan used to do it, where it all... It's like um, if you watch Singing in the Rain, it's impressive because Gene Kelly does all that stuff without any cuts. And it's just a sheer, it? but it's a sheer physical feat of seeing a flat shot and somebody just performing for five or six solid minutes. There's a, a complete, fantastic. There's a different energy entirely to something like. Oh that, yeah, I mean, there? and you can see, I mean, on um, people like Bruce Lee and, and Gene Kelly and Jackie Chan, you can see the physical exertion of what they're doing. I mean, I think um, someone like the modern equivalent, someone like Jason Statham, kind of gets away with it because you can see he's a he's an athletic guy and he can actually. You know, you can tell he's not getting tired, whereas films like, say, 
the Bourne films. There's so many edits, there's so many cutaways w- within the fight scenes that it becomes... You, you get a bit lost in the action, to be honest. Just as a digression, but because you've studied film at university, mm-hmm. talk us through something like um, Moulin Rouge, because apparently Baz Luhrmann used far more frames for that film than mm. most filmmakers. Yeah, I, I mean, Moulin Rouge is a really visually impressive film. It's fantastic. But my one my sort of problem with it, which leads on from what I was just saying, was you didn't see anyone dance. You saw a lot of uh, people dancing and being edited around... And you're not sure whether it's the edit creating the dance or whether they're actually they're actually as good as, as they are, which took away a bit of the enjoyment because you never saw a can can. I see. Which your is point. very strange. Which, didn't see which the is very dance strange in its entirety. Absolutely impre- very impressive movie. It's just about to do the uh, Great Gatsby. It's just I being can't finished wait to off. see that. Oh, it looks brilliant. But again, you know, there was nothing wrong with the first Great Gatsby. Why do they do all these remakes of films that have... Um, I'm thinking of the Thomas Crown Affair as well. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, it, with that, I enjoyed both the remake and the old version, but very often the, the remake's never as good as the old one. Why do they bother with all these new books coming out that they could make films about? I think it's it's because film is a, is a business at the end of the day, and what you've got, whether it's... Um, something like uh, uh, The Great Gatsby, which is a recognisable name, or um, at the moment you'll find there's a lot of um, a lot of 80s movies being remade, um, bits and pieces like um, My Bloody Valentine. It generally tends to be horror films like Friday the 13th. They're being sold on the basis that I recognise that name, my older brother has mentioned that, I'll go and watch that. I mean, they're never quite as good... Because, you know, we, I mean, I remember watching, you'd sort of watch a lot of this stuff on video cassette, which had a weird quality, which makes mm-hmm. it all seem a bit more illicit Seems anyway. Like so long ago, no, oh, yeah, it? but I think it's purely an economics thing. And the problem is with Hollywood, no one wants to be the first person to say yes, but everyone wants to be the second person to say yes. No one, like films like uh, Slumdog Millionaire, spent ages trying to get any funding. It, it almost died several times. Well, talking of Slumdog Millionaire, what did you think of the opening film to the Olympic ceremony? I thought it was fantastic. Wasn't it just? I, I thought mean, it was... the vision of yeah. and, and the collation of those shots was extraordinary. How one mind worked all that out is utterly beyond me. It, it, it was quite incredible. What I, what I really liked about it was it was an opening ceremony that was, to me, it was about sort of Britain and who we are, as opposed to the state of Britain and the sort of the monarchy and so on and so forth. But everything was in there and it was a big a big mash of all things British. I loved it. Fantastic. But, I mean, hugely clever as well. Oh, ridiculously clever. Um, and it, it was quite striking how similar it looked to uh, Danny Boyle's Frankenstein, which was screened up at the Foreman Arts Centre as well. And you can really see sort of... Yeah, this is a guy who made that, but you can really see his sort of theatrical style in there. I mean, going back to the remake of The Great Gatsby, I suppose um, our age and our times and our economic times have something to do with the making of films as well, because you think we're almost... It's it's almost akin to prohibition. You know, mm-hmm. times are tight, at least, anyway, mirroring the 1920s, and you think we like to look at glamour when, when times are a bit hard, don't we? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, it's a bit I like mean, hemlines reflecting the, yeah, the, no, the economics of the Yeah, no, it's, it's true. Country. You know, films are, um, films are always of their age. Um, some age better than others over time, and some, some become slightly obsolete. But, I mean, this year alone we've got films such as uh, Lawless, which, again, is about Prohibition era. Um, Warner Brothers are releasing a, um, a G-Man movie, uh, essentially, it's, they've gone back to the sort of 1940s style of gangst- gangster flick, and they've got people like Sean Penn and Josh Brolin in it. So there seems to be a, a resurgence of stuff from that sort of, um, I suppose, what they call the the American gangster era. Because the fashions are mirroring that also. How do you go about getting films like The Raid to Guernsey? You just phone and email people and annoy them at the uh, the production companies and the companies that are doing the distribution. In this case, it's Momentum, who really kindly have let us put it on a bit earlier than they would usually. Well, it's uh, directed by Gareth Evans. The Raid is one of this year's most talked about movies. The setup is simple. A SWAT team becomes trapped in a tenement run by a ruthless mobster and is attacked by an army of killers and thugs. The action is brutal and the critical claim is unanimous. Empire magazine said of the film, the most exciting action movie of the year. And Peter Bradshaw in The Guardian said the, range is complete, the raid is completely deranged and completely superb. And you needn't miss out on the opportunity to 
see the raid on Guernsey's largest screen two weeks before its retail release. Just remind us of the details, Winter Thompson. OK, now, uh, it's rated 18, because uh, <laughs> it is a slightly violent film. Uh, we're charging £5 per ticket, so just, you know, a pound more than it would probably cost you to rent the thing when it comes out. And that's on the 10th of September at 8pm. We're going to be screening at the Performing Arts Centre and the tickets will be available on guernseytickets.gg very soon. Well, it's been lovely talking to you about film. We must Thank do you very much. It's often. been a pleasure. <laughs> Well, I, and I also hope that the, the birth goes well, and I'm oh, thank you so very much. thrilled for you, for you, both you and Katie. Winter Tyson, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. The news is next. Passionate about island life. BBC Guernsey.